Now on to the actual reactions themselves. So acid and base reactions get the special name of neutralization reactions. This was one of our five types of reactions that we talked about in the past. So this should not be a new word, at least I hope not. So when we mix an acid and a base, kind of like a combustion reaction, we always have the same products. Acid plus base always yields a salt and water. And I want to specifically draw your attention at this particular second to this water here because this is water where there was not water before. So I know this is an aqueous reaction. It's happening in water. It is dissolved. But you have additional water being generated in this reaction. It's kind of cool. If you take 10 milliliters of acid and 10 milliliters of base and mix them together, you're not going to get 20 milliliters of solution. You'll actually get a larger volume. But that's a, a fun calculation involving all kinds of stoic and equilibrium stuff. So even though that's actually what happens, we won't be doing that calculation in these neutralization reactions. But I did want to mention that it does occur. You make a water where there was not water before. This salt here is not just table salt. A lot of people are under the impression that salt means it either has to be NaCl or that it has to be a halide, but that's not true. In this case, we're referring to a salt as any cation with any anion. So it's whatever ions didn't go into making that HOH, that water. Our salt can be slightly acidic or slightly basic, depending on the acids and bases that we are reacting. Remember, we talked about conjugate acids and bases a couple of videos ago the idea that everything in an acid-base reaction can have acidic character or basic character. So with the salts, for the first one, if we mix a strong acid with a strong base, we actually get a neutral salt. Both of those acids and bases will completely nuke each other, and you'll end up with a neutral salt and water. For example, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. And when those two things mix together, you get sodium chloride and water, a neutral salt and water. When I mix together a strong acid and a weak base, that acidic character holds over into my salt, so my salt is slightly acidic. So HCl is a strong acid, once again. Ammonium hydroxide is actually a weak base. And when we mix those two together, we get a slightly acidic salt. This NH4 here and the Cl, the Cl lost an H+. Okay, we have a slightly acidic salt here and our water. The last situation is the flip-flop, where... <clears throat> if we have a weak acid and a strong base, that basic character carries over into our salt. Carb uh, carbonic acid, excuse me, is a weak acid, sodium hydroxide, again a strong base, making our slightly basic salt of sodium carbonate. The last situation I should mention, because when I mix together a weak acid and a weak base, it is still a reaction. There is still something going on. But if you remember, by definition, a weak acid and a weak base do not dissociate very much. So there's not a whole lot of H plus and OH minus interacting in the solution. So not a whole lot happens. There's going to be only a very minute amount of whatever salt might be formed. And so in an introductory chemistry class, it's not enough for us to count. So, here's our first example. When we say to neutralize something, we're talking about getting it to a pH 7-ish, that is neutral. Uh, you can kind of debate whether exactly 7 is neutral if you're allowed a little leeway, but what you're trying to do, in essence, is make sure that every H plus has an OH, every OH has an H plus, all of those extraneous ions have been neutralized by finding one of the opposite. So here's an example of a problem. Uh, this is the same one that I give to my students when I teach this chapter, uh, so that's why I changed that number there. What volume of 3 molar hydrochloric acid is needed to neutralize 50 milliliters of 5 molar um, sodium hydroxide? 
This might come in handy if you're doing what's called a titration lab and you can actually calculate the volume of the acid you would need to completely nuke this amount of our other guy. So the first thing that you need to do is like every other reaction we've ever started. We need to write the reaction. So we've got hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide to produce double replacement reaction and I'll write it as such. So even though this has the special name of a neutralization reaction, you can still treat it like a double replacement. We still have these ions in here. We still want to make sure that all of our compounds sum to zero. We would still need to balance number of atoms on both sides, but lucky for us, this is all one to one. Makes life pretty darn simple. The second part of the problem is where the quote unquote neutralization aspect comes in. So step two is to determine the amount of H plus or OH minus that needs to be neutralized. So if we go back to our problem, it says that I'm neutralizing 50 mils of a 5 molar sodium hydroxide solution. So I need to know how much OH is there in that 50 mils of 5 molar solution. So we're going to start off by figuring out how many moles of OH. If you remember from our solutions chapter, molarity is moles over liter. So if I do molarity times volume, I end up with moles. So let's start that off. 50 milliliters of that solution, but milliliters, this is liters. So our first step here has to be to convert from milliliters to liters. I hope this is becoming a little bit of a game for you. I know it is for me. I know I have to start in milliliters and I have to end in moles and I just have to figure out the puzzle pieces that go in the middle. Simple things for simple minds, I suppose. Since our sodium hydroxide solution is five molar, five moles per one liter, but I can flip that upside down or whatever as I need, but I don't need to here. Now there's one final step that we need to throw in here because it's not the entire sodium hydroxide molecule that is being neutralized here. It's only that OH portion that needs nuking, as I say. So we have to look at this molecule and say per one mole of sodium hydroxide, how many moles of OH do I have? In this one, it's one, nice and simple. So you're going to multiply all the way across the top, divide by all the way across the bottom, and we end up finding out that we have 0.25 moles of OH minus floating around in that solution that needs to be neutralized. If you look at step three, it says to determine the amount of OH or H plus needed to nuke step two. Since if we look at our water up here, Notice that 1 H plus needs 1 OH minus. So if I have 0.25 moles of OH minus, I'm going to need 0.25 moles of H plus. Now the trick becomes I need to get from moles of H plus to the volume of my HCl solution. How much of that HCl solution do I need to take out of the bottle in order to have this much H plus floating around. So here we go on our game again. H plus, I couldn't find that in my equation up here. So when I go back to the top here, my H plus is found in my HCl. So we've got to convert from moles of H plus. There's only one of those in one mole of our HCl. We're going to volume. So I need something that's going to help me convert between moles and liters. I have it, molarity, back up here. Our problem tells us that the molarity of our hydrochloric acid solution was three molar, three moles per one liter. And I can flip that da upside down, which is what I need to do here. You could stop here. Depending on the problem you have, your teacher might have asked for you to go on to milliliters, or we can stop here with liters. I'm going to do both. So here, we multiply all the way across the top, divided by all the way across the bottom, and we find out that we need 
0.083 repeating liters of our 3 molar HCl solution to get those 0.25 moles to nuke our base. If you want to do this in, mil or in milliliters, I'll go ahead and show you that conversion as well. In one liter, there are 1,000 milliliters. So that's 83.3, .3, how many sig figs you want, milliliters of our 3 molar HCl. And that's the answer that our problem asked us for. What volume of 3 molar HCl is needed? This volume of 3 molar HCl is needed. Let's see if I can get another example in. I'll use this new 15 minutes I've got. So notice we're worrying about strong, strong interactions, and we're not worrying about that Ka or Kb or if it all dissociates thing. That comes in the equilibrium chapter, which we will do at a later date. For now, we're just thinking about strong, strong interactions. So let's see if we can buzz through this problem real quick before I run out of time. What volume of sulfuric acid is necessary to neutralize 350 mils of a 4 molar potassium hydroxide solution? Step one, same old, same old. We need an equation. Sulfuric acid, sulfuric. So that's an oxy acid. Ick tells me I have the eight ion sulfate. And I need two hydrogens to knock out that two minus on my sulfate. Potassium hydroxide is what we're reacting with. So my salt is potassium sulfate and then my water. So let's see, balance this real quick. Two, two, all right. Next, to determine the amount of H plus or OH minus to be nuked. We're talking about 350 mils of potassium hydroxide. So just that hydroxide right there. So I have 350 milliliters. I don't want milliliters, I want liters, gosh darn it. And it's in a 4 molar solution. But that's for potassium hydroxide. I don't want potassium hydroxide. I want hydroxide. But luckily, still one. So multiply all the way across the top, divided by all the way across the bottom, and we find out that we, need, we have 1.4 moles of uh, that OH floating around. That means I'm going to need 1.4 moles of H plus to nuke that. But what volume of sulfuric acid do I need? If you think about sulfuric acid, now I have 2 moles of H per 1 mole of my H2SO4. So 1 mole H2SO4 would produce 2 moles of H plus. It's called a diprotic acid, diprotic, two protons. Now let's get from moles to liters. Our molarity is going to get us there. Problem told us that we had a 1.5 mole per liter solution. And we could stop here or we could go on to milliliters. I like milliliters, so I'm going to go on to milliliters. Multiply all the way across the top, divided by all the way across the bottom. tells us we need 466.7 milliliters of that 1.5 molar sulfuric acid solution. So that's two pretty straightforward examples for you. I'll be doing a couple of more later that are more titration-y, like lab-looking problems, and some different ones trying to solve for pH of solution as well. So I hope this made some sense as far as your first introduction goes. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Take care.